Hello and welcome to Writing Quest. My name is Brendan Pugh and in today's episode we are going to dive deeper into how I use Notion to outline and track all of the projects and stories in my fantasy series. Huzzah! All right, everybody, welcome to Writing Quest. So if you've been following the channel for a while, you know that I've made a couple of videos on Notion, and one of them was kind of the breakdown of how I've been using Notion to track all the projects and everything going on. So I've refined that process, and that's what this video is about. So we're going to talk about how I'm using Notion to not only track the projects, but outline the entire series and be able to see it in a way um, that I haven't been able to do with my last outline. So this is going to be a much better view. Um, if you watched the previous video, when I was doing that video, I was actually writing in Notion. I was writing the book in Notion. I have kind of moved away from that to where I'm actually writing the books in a program called Scrivener, which we have one video about, but we'll also make some more videos about that um, soon on how you can use that to actually write the book. It's a much better program. It's a great program for writing. But in this video, we're going to talk about how I'm outlining the entire series and books with Notion. So if you've been following along for a while as well, you know that this has expanded greatly from the original story that it used to be. It's a now 12 book series so far. And that has presented itself to be a quite a few different challenges. And so in this video, that's, that, that's what I'm trying to tackle with this whole notion thing. I'm trying to figure out how I can keep track of all the details and make sure that by the time I get to the end of this, that the that it actually flows really well and all the details are there and it makes a lot of sense. So without further ado, let's jump into the computer. All right, so this is a template I've been working on. I'm gonna blur out some of this stuff below here because I don't really want um, you to give away the whole series for you, but um, I've been working on this a little bit. I'm going to eventually turn this into a template that you will be able to download and use yourself so that you can plan your own fantasy series, which would be great because there's never too many fantasy series, in my opinion. So first off, we have basically the setup of this is we have one table it has all of the books and all of the chapters for each of those books in the one table. And then it's separated by different views and sorted in certain ways. So the first view we're going to get into is the synopsis view. So if you open this, I have a few here. And now I'm still building this, so I don't have everything in here I think that I want. Um, but I wanted to show you what I'm working on now so you can really see what's going on. So synopsis view. So in the synopsis view, I have all 12 books listed, and the only thing that you can see in this view is what it is, and the reason I have type in here is because if I add something like a short story to the list, or because um, you, if you've seen my previous Notion video, you know that I have quite a few different stories, not just these 12 different short stories, standalone novels, other trilogies, that kind of thing. So type is going to come in more into play when that happens. And then I could filter by type depending on what stories I'm working on at the time. Um, and then we have book. And this is the order. So this would be the order of the series. So as we build this out and add short stories and standalone books, um, you this would pop in and you'd add and you'd be able to keep everything in order. Then we have, of course, the title of the books, what's going on uh, with that, each title so that you know what the book is called, pretty simple. And then the synopsis, this is the big one. So this would be like the blurb or the dust jacket, the thing that you'd read if you were to pick it up in the bookstore and read the back of it, this is what that is. The reason we start with this view is because this is the grand overview. So you could look through this view and you could read the synopsis of each book and know what the story is generally kind of about. I'm starting my outlining process or have started my outlining process with the synopsis. I'm just working. I'm going to work through writing a synopsis for each book. I don't have them included here at the moment because I want to give it all away. And that will give me a nice general overview of the whole thing. So we're just starting with a really broad, wide um, view of what it is. 
Then I thought it would be nice if you could track your characters per book. So with this being such a sprawling series, um, there's going to be a couple of main character changes, different antagonists, different supporting characters, but they're also all going to kind of pop back in and out at certain times. So I have a uh, column here for main character, main antagonist, supporting cast, main supporting cast, and supporting cast. Those are kind of the big ones. Um, supporting cast is just kind of a bunch of random characters that may or may not matter much to the story, but they are there. I don't know how much they all end up getting used, um, but that's kind of just a bu empty bucket to put all those characters in. Main supporting cast are the main side characters. So the main, like they might have their own plot points themselves, um, and they are of direct correlation to the main protagonist and the main antagonist. And then, of course, your main antagonist, the main character, and all that kind of thing. Um, the reason this is nice to have alongside your book synopsis, at least for a series this large, is that you can kind of see how the flow of it goes when characters may die or leave, when new characters come in. Um, just kind of gives you that overview if I'm getting a little confused as I'm writing or if I'm going through the outlines and I don't quite know what's going on. It's just kind of a thing I can reference back to to make sure, oh yeah, this character is supposed to be here at this time. So that's the main synopsis view, pretty simple there. The next view I'm gonna take you to is the series outline view. So in this, it still has all 12 books listed or all the other books. Um, I don't know if we'll make different outline views depending on what it is, but for now, series outline is gonna be all 12 books. So what I have in here is the, the same synopsis so that as I'm outlining, I can um, make sure that it works with that, or I can update the synopsis um, if I need to. And the the idea of this whole, the goal for this entire table is to slowly work through the process. So you start with the synopsis view and you just write the synopsis for each book. Then you move on to the series outline where you start breaking that synopsis down into the three act story structure, which is what I've chosen for all of my books to use as a template to make this work. So I just finished recently filling out everything for the first book of Wolves and Wizards or a potential name change, The Wolves of Iskardath. We'll see. Sorry, I don't want to panic anybody. So I have the synopsis and then I have basically just the three act story structure in a row. So we have hook, inciting incident, build up, first plus point, first pinch point. That's act one. Then we go on to pre midpoint reactionary hero, game changing midpoint, post midpoint action hero, second pinch point. That is act two. Then we have supposed victory, disaster, dark moment, aha moment, climactic, confrontation, victory and resolution. That's act three. Now, that is not a complete exhaustive list of everything that may happen. You could have many different pinch points throughout the whole thing. Those are just different things that help you up the action. Um, and so I've taken a lot of cues from Abby Emmons on this. She is really big about three-act structure. And so I've been kind of studying some of the things she does. And I kind of am using pretty much her exact um, method at the moment. And then I'm going to adapt it to a fantasy series, which is a little different. And so what's cool about this view is because it's a series, because it's all 12 books, you this is a view where you can really, you can outline each book in the three act story structure and still um, have, you can see where things intersect. You can see where, you know, if you have something in the first pinch point in book one, it does that affect book three. It just really gives a whole overview of the whole thing. For some people, maybe this is too much to look at, um, but for me, what I'm really finding is that because this story is so huge, I don't know if I can start writing it well without outlining the whole thing because I need to know what if something in book 12 is going to affect book one. Um, it's really kind of stopping me up, and so I'm going to be working through this for each book as we go. <clears throat> I'm feeling really confident about my... Um, outline for book one. I'm feeling like through all of the iterations we've gone through, it's really starting to take good shape in a way that matters a bunch and is based on the internal conflict of the character, which is what actually drives you to care about the story because that's what matters to the protagonist. 
After this, we get even more granular. So I kind of broke these views out. So if you wanted to just focus on act one, you could go to the act one outline view, which still has all 12 books, but it only has the first act one. So if you kind of wanted to break it down and not look at the whole thing and focus a little more, you could do that. And then of course we have the same for act two and we have the same for act three. Um, then once you work your way through the series outline, so you know the whole thing, then it's time to start breaking it down by chapter. And this is where it gets really um, fun. I started this, so um, I'm not gone all the way through this on book one yet, but we have book one uh, chapter outline. And basically what this is, is I have all my chapters starting to list. I haven't got all of them through, but we have prologue, chapter one, chapter two, chapter three, and so on. Um, I've re-added in the main character. So who's the main character for that chapter? Who's the main point of view? And then some main supporting cast, which I haven't quite filled out all that. And then what act it's in. So as we go along, we're going to have act one, act two, act three. That'll just kind of be a visual reminder to show us what we're looking at as we go. Then we break down the chapters into their own three-act story structure, which is a little different from the main story structure, but... Um, it is important to show this as you work through it so that every chapter matters and every scene matters. So first off, we start with the goal of the scene. What is the point? What do we? What's the information we need to get across, whether it's character information, plot information, uh, setting information? What are the things we have to get into this um, goal or into this scene? So that's the goal of the scene. Then we have the setup, which is just the inciting incident of the scene. The tension, what happens after the inciting incident, and how does that build? You have a crossroads, which is now the protagonist of the scene has to make a decision one way or the other, good or bad. What's the fallout of that decision? And then the outcome of what happens next, or like the cliffhanger. Cliffhanger is a little strong, but it's basically the outcome of what happens based on the decision that they make. And then the what's the new question that's posed by the outcome? So the outcome happens, then what's the new question? Um, so I've started filling that out per <clears throat> um, per chapter, per scene. I, I like to think of each scene as a chapter, but really the chapter can be a sequence. So it doesn't have to just be like, you know, one or two events. It could be multiple events in the same chapter, but a sequence of events. And then the last one I have here is going to be the scene walkthrough. So this is where I'm going to actually go through each moment of the scene before I write and say it's kind of a good way to think of it would be blocking like if you did a stage play anyone who's ever done a stage play or a musical or been on a film set or anything like that to me this is the blocking so this is the mechanics of our character is here then they need to go here this person needs to tell them that then they go over here so it's kind of a way to just block the scene out before you write the narrative. One of the things that I struggle with, without having the scene blocked out, I write the chapter and then it goes into like a totally different direction than I wanted it to go. And then I'm very confused and then I have a mess. So all of this is designed to not have a mess. So I'm going to block the scene. And then as I go to write the narrative, I will have a perfectly outlined guide so that when I get to the end of the chapter, I accomplish the goal I take everyone through this whole three-act story structure of the scene and make sure that I still stick with the story structure of the whole book. That's the main flow of this table. So we have this, we'll do a quick review here. We'll do the synopsis view, which is just the main overview of what characters are where and what the synopsis of the book is. Then you work your way into the series outline, which is basically walking your book through the three-act story structure and putting in the pivotal moments. You can break that down by act one, or act two, or act three. And then you get into the individual books, chapter outlines, which takes you through everything from the setup, tension, crossroad, decision, outcome, the new question, and then the blocking or the scene walkthrough. So I hope you learned something from this video. I hope that helps you. I'm a really big fan of using technology and software to help with our stories, help write more cohesive stories. I'm going to be using these things heavily to make sure that I think through everything that I could possibly think through. I hope you liked this video. I hope you learned something. If you haven't checked out our previous video on Notion, you can check that out here. Otherwise, 
Please come back, comment, subscribe. Let me know what you think, if this helped you in any way. And we'll see you next time on Writing Quest. Huzzah!